This is the Mega Adapt. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Mega Adapt ETZ21. This does something really cool. The adapter allows you to take this, a Sony lens, FE lens, and adapt it to this, a Nikon Z body. It's like a Frankenstein type of thing. Some people have said this blasphemy. Why would you take this and put it on this? Well, why not? If you can do it, why not try? Plus there's some people that might wanna buy the Z9, but have Sony glass. So the real question though, is does that adapter actually work? Well, let's find out. Come on, let's go. Waiting for sunrise isn't that bad. It's a good time to stretch, shake off the previous night's sleep, and get ready for whatever the day has in store. And when the sun finally does peek over the horizon, a thick layer of Sahara dust acts like a sponge and soaks up the golden light. Time to head over to the local tide pool and see what's going on. A small congregation of snowy egrets happily plucks shrimp from the masses of sargassum weed that washed ashore the night before. And a young reddish egret longingly looks out into the tide pool. It appears like we have plenty of birds, but not many fish. And all of that is about to change. The water erupts with hundreds of small bait fish as they try to escape a school of incoming game fish, but evading what's below the surface has drawn the attention of brown pelicans. These birds know an easy meal when they see it, and this situation gives them the perfect opportunity to feed. This also gives me the perfect opportunity to test the Z9 with the Sony 200-600 on some fast-moving action. This is awesome! Our first volunteers are these two beautiful adult brown pelicans, and one of them sees the plentiful bounty below, it takes aim and makes the plunge head first. This is how these birds fill those pouches with fish. Another much younger bird comes in from the left. You see the lighter colors? That's how you can tell this bird is young, but its young age doesn't mean it lacks experience, and it too comes crashing into the water head first. I wonder if these birds get headaches. And yet another younger pelican takes aim as well, and it comes crashing into the water too. These birds are busy filling up their pouches with those tiny bait fish. So I noticed immediately, if you hold down the AF on button, say you're focusing, and you change the focal length on this lens, the camera stops focusing immediately. It just throws it off completely out of whack, which is not that big of a deal, but that doesn't happen when you use this lens on a, a native Sony body. I wouldn't expect this adapter to be perfect. Maybe they can change that with a firmer update, but that's the first problem that I've noticed with this combo. Back at the tide pool and we find our reddish egret casually cruising the shallows. This is not this bird's usual behavior. When a reddish egret hunts, it dances gracefully through the water. Wait, it looks like it has spotted something in the shallows. Perhaps we'll get to see this bird's elegant dance. Get ready for it. Um, whoa, that was disappointing. That was a plastic bag. I'm not sure what that says about us as a species. I'll have to grab that later. Hey, somebody's got a fish. This snowy egret has managed to pull one from the rocks and it doesn't last long. Down the hatch it goes. These two great egrets have followed suit. The fish must be congregating over here in these rocks. Our reddish egret thinks so but it looks like the fish might have moved on. This bird might be a little late. The pelicans are still busy filling their pouches with fish, so our reddish egret strolls right back to where it started, while this very young pelican moves in for the kill. And that is a nice mangrove propagule. You can think of that as a seed pod for the mangrove trees. It looks like our reddish egret might have actually found something worthwhile. This is the classic behavior we are looking for. Hopefully this bird's efforts yield more than a plastic bag. Let's see if we can get some shots of this bird in action. That's more like it. This is a great example of the classic reddish egret pose. They love to throw their wings up over their heads right before they try to snatch a fish from the water, but the camera lens combo has back focused. 
Do you see this area of water right here? Notice how sharp and clear it is? That's where the camera focused and it took quite a few frames before it actually corrected itself. I noticed very erratic autofocus when photographing this bird, but hey, at least the bird caught a fish, but then it drops it. This bird is definitely a young one and the inexperience shows. But the bird quickly recovers the fish and of course swallows it whole. There's more fish to be had and our reddish egret is eager to get to it. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, so close. One thing you'll start to notice when you're photographing birds, especially ones that are feeding, is they aren't always successful at catching food, but they can't just give up. And I find that to be very inspirational. Plus their failures make for some great photo opportunities like these. I love being able to capture the free flying water droplets when the birds come out of the water like this. But one thing is for certain, persistence really pays for both the bird and the photographer who is willing to patiently wait it out. The great thing about photographing reddish egrets when they are hunting is the almost constant nonstop action. Their hunting style provides plenty of great photo opportunities. I love it when they throw their wings up over their heads like this. And there are a couple of ideas why they do this. They might be trying to minimize the glare on the surface of the water, or they might be using their wings to try and scare the fish up off of the bottom where they would become a much easier catch. Either way, this behavior is what makes the reddish egret so much fun to photograph. And when they finally do manage to catch a fish, not only is it rewarding to the bird, but also to the photographer as well. The only one getting the bad end of the deal is the fish. But as we all know, this is the cycle of life and the birds have to eat too. I'm just glad that I'm not a fish. Pretty interesting little gadget, that adapter. The main thing though is how did it perform? I showed you a lot of good images and I showed you, I think one instance of it not working. I would say overall, I had about a 60 to 70% hit rate. There were some times when it seemed to really be erratic. Hold on, my cat keeps yelling at me. Look at this guy. <laughs> this little wild cat, I had a video about him a little while ago. I thought it was a girl, but it's a boy. This is Thomas. And he's just absolutely insane as most cats are. But back to the adapter. I think it worked about 60 to 70% for uh, hit rate. There were times when it didn't work. It didn't like that reddish egret when the reddish egret was in front of the same color water. So when there was no contrast, you could see the focus shifting backwards and, and forwards quite a bit. Um, anything in a clear uh, sky was good, but another problem I noticed was anytime anything flew in front of any kind of busy background, it would be very erratic. And then like if the bird flew this way, the focus points would trail off behind the bird and it would lose focus. I don't see that happening with the 200 to 600 on Sony cameras. And I don't really see that happening with the Nikon Z9 with the Nikon lenses. So maybe they can update that stuff in a firmware update. I don't know. It was, uh, it's a pretty cool thing if you want to get the Z9 without spending too much money um, and getting all Nikon lenses if you're a Sony shooter. But just understand it's going to probably be underwhelming to you. It's not going to perform as well as the native lenses do on the Sony cameras. And it's not going to perform as well as the native Nikon lenses do on the Nikon bodies. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe, share, like, comment, all that stuff. And I, there's a membership now to my channel if you don't know about that. If you're actually still watching, I imagine most people have left already. But down at the bottom, there's a button you can click to become a member to my channel. It's just a way to help support me and what I do. I've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up. I've got a trip from Africa, some of the craziest eagle stuff I've ever experienced in Canada. That's coming up as well. And I'm going to have an A7 IV setup guide. And then one of the, the most requested things ever, a video setup guide on how to shoot video on the Sony A1. That's coming up too. I'm working on all that stuff now. Thanks for the continued support and I'll see you later.